Uh, this is just a video showing my Atari and uh, my new Atari 1010 tape deck that I got today. You know, so just thought I'd let you hear the Atari talk. Anyway, here we go. This is an invitation to programming, developed for Atari Incorporated by Program Design Incorporated. Lesson 1. This is an invitation to programming. This series is designed to teach you how to make the Atari computer do things for you. You don't have to know a thing about computers to use this series. You are probably already familiar with some of the things the Atari computer can do. You won't learn how to make the computer do all these things now, but this demonstration cassette will teach you the following things. How to write simple programs. How to do math. We'll also demonstrate how to change color. How to do simple sound effects even how to do simple graphics. After using this set of demonstration programs, you can go on to use the Atari Basic Book. This will teach you the basic language in more detail, and you will be able to learn more complicated tasks. But for now, we'll keep things pretty simple, and just help you get started programming your computer. There uh, are six things are different now. <laughs> Each lesson will use a step-by-step -step approach to learning. Information will be presented in small steps. On each step, you will be asked a question. When you can correctly answer the question, you will go on to the next step. This will continue until you reach the goal for that lesson. Then, if you like, you can practice what you have just learned before you go on to the next lesson. Before we begin, Let's take a quick look at the keyboard of the Atari computer. It is laid out like a typewriter keyboard. If you make a typing error, you can correct it by pressing the backspace key. Push the backspace key on the upper right-hand side of the keyboard. Another important key is the quotation mark. It is over the 2 on the keyboard. To get the quotation mark, push either shift key and push the 2 just as you do on a typewriter. Press it now. Here are two more keys you should know about. The one flashing with the Atari symbol on it makes the letters reverse. If you accidentally push it and get reverse letters, push it again and you will get normal letters. Here is the break key. Push it and this program will come to a stop, so don't press it. If you accidentally press it, type C-O-N-T to continue. The program will go on from the point where it stops. We are now ready to begin learning about programming. But first, type C-L-O-A-D to load the second part of this lesson. Would you like to see more? I don't know. Anyway. All right. How do you do this? Oh, yes. Let's see. L. O A D. Where's the return key? There it is. It's already plain, so let's return. Do a load of buzzing and then it disappears. This takes some time, so I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> 
Just oh, gonna pause the video. Back now. Right. It's loaded this part now. So now you've got to type run. Uh, U N Run. Turn. People think computers are magical machines that only a mathematical genius could learn to use. The fact is, computers are quite easy to use. You can give the computer simple instructions like the ones shown on your screen. These instructions change miles into kilometers. The Atari computer uses a computer language called BASIC, Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code. It was originally designed for beginners but it is now used on most small computers for all kinds of uses. Your computer understands the basic language, and so you have to write your instructions in that language. Fortunately, the words in the basic language are all common, everyday words like run and list. The TV screen shows some of the words used to write basic. Notice that the words are all in capital letters. Now, answer your first question. Are basic instructions written in capitals or small letters? Type the number of your choice and push return. Oh, which one is it? What would you say? Capitals. One. Return. Turn again. One of the things you want the computer to do is put words on the TV screen as we've been doing. To tell the computer to do this, you will use your first basic word, print. Here's how it works. Type the word print. Then type the quotation mark. Put the words that you wish printed, then close the quotes. Uh -huh. The computer will print the word or words in quotes oh, when wow. you press return. Oh, that's good. Question two. Okay, which of these choices will print your name when you press return? Hmm. Which one? I think it's three. Return again. A computer cannot really think. It cannot figure out what you meant to say when you make a typing error. If you misspell a word, the computer will give you an error message. The basic instruction must be exactly correct, or you will get an error message like you see on the screen. Question three. Which of these will give you an error message? Hmm. Three. Both. It's on. Question four. Which of these will print the word hello? One, I think. Yep, one. The word print can be used to do math. If you type print 2 plus 2, the computer will add 2 plus 2 and print the result. 4. Question 5. What will this print? What will it print, I wonder? Um, 5 minus 4, add 8. 9. I think. See if I'm right. Yep. Basic uses the regular plus and minus sign. However, 
To avoid confusion, it uses special signs to show multiplication and division. Multiplication is shown with a star. Division is shown with a slash. The screen shows print 10 times 2 and print 10 divided by 2. Question 6. Type in a print instruction that shows 8 times 5. By the way, when you type in an answer like this, both the words and the spaces must be exactly the same as the computer's answer, or the computer will tell you you're wrong. Here, don't put spaces around the multiplication sign. So, okay. Um, print. All right, yep, space. What is it? Eight times five. Looks like that. This is the end of lesson one. You can practice using the print instruction on your own. Try typing different things in quotes to get different messages. Then type C-L-O-A-D, to load lesson two. Okay. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Well, that's the end of this video, but I will uh, upload another video sometime in the week to continue the next lesson. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.